you could buy any of these solar generators here and have enough power to run your whole house, but you're gonna pay a premium price to do that. What I recommend is instead use the most affordable server rack battery that I have found, which is made by EcoWorthy. $500 less than the common EG4 ones. These are blowing my mind. The craziest thing about all of this is that each one of these batteries is only $850. Each one of my Life Power 4 EG4 batteries is about $1,300. Exact same capacity, exact same communication. Another server rack battery that I really do like are these Vader batteries, but they're about $935 per battery. The main difference being it has an LCD screen on the front of every battery, which makes it a lot easier to read what state of charge these are at. And I can even go into these different screens and see how many cycles each battery has has gone through. But to save $80 per battery compared to the Vaders and almost $500 per battery compared to the EG4s, these EcoWorthies are absolutely worth it. Now, just so you understand the relationship between EcoWorthy and me, they sent these out to me in order to get an honest review. I'm not being paid to tell you anything particular. I don't have to mention anything. I don't have to give a positive review. This is just my opinion on the EcoWorthy server rack batteries and how they're working for me. Just like with all my videos, my opinion cannot be purchased. Now, each one of these batteries is 5.12 kilowatt hours or 5,120 watt hours. Call it five kilowatt hours to keep it simple. By having two of these batteries, I've got 10 kilowatt hours and it's easy to go even up to six of these batteries for over 30 kilowatt hours of total battery capacity. And I've linked it with my own EG4 6000 XP inverter. I bought this inverter on my own, not sponsored in any way. And I really, really like this inverter. One of the coolest things that I've done is I've added my own split phase outlets with this adapter here on the bottom. And I'm gonna show you how I wired that up here in just a second, but that allows me to get 120 volt and 240 volt split phase power to run my whole house. And all it took was four simple wires, and I'll show you exactly where they go inside this inverter, and then two cables to go from the inverter to the batteries, and then two more cables just to go in between the batteries. And with all of that, I had an off-grid system ready and done. In order to add solar to it, it's just two more cables, and you can even have a generator recharge this whole system and recharge the batteries so that everything can be running smoothly for your whole house. So even if there's really bad weather, you can run the whole house with ease with a gas generator, with solar, with batteries, whatever setup you need. But this is the craziest part. This whole thing right here only costs about $3,500. That's including the extra battery cables and the split phase outlet. It's actually under $3,500. To give you a quick comparison, six kilowatts split phase power, 10 kilowatt hours of battery, 10 kilowatts of solar input for $3,500. The Jackery 5000 Plus, which is a unit that I do really like and it's one that I recommend, it's better in my opinion than the Anker Solux F3800 Plus as well as the Delta Pro Ultra from EcoFlow. This is a much better bang for the buck. This has a 7.2 kilowatt inverter that can do split phase power, but it has a five kilowatt hour battery internally, but it will only let up to four kilowatts of solar input using normal MC4 connectors. You can get an additional 1.2 kilowatts of solar if you use their proprietary connectors that are also built into the system. So in total, you can get up to 5.2 kilowatts of solar input. This is $3,500. So for the exact same price, you can get a slightly larger inverter, but half the battery and less than half of the solar input compared to this setup right here. Now, one other really nice option would be to upgrade from the 6000 XP to the 12000 XP. It's about $800 more, but then you get 12 kilowatts of output power and 24 kilowatts of solar input, which is absolutely insane. You can still add as many batteries as you want to that whole system. So for about $4,500, you can get a 12000 XP 10 kilowatt hours of battery and the cart that goes with it. And that includes adding on the battery cables and the split phase outlets right here, all for under $4,500. That's just insane how affordable a system like this is. And you can quite literally run your whole house. Just keep in mind, it's going to be difficult to run multiple electric appliances at the same time, such as an electric water heater, an electric range, electric dryer, well pump is not too bad. And then of course, an air conditioner. All of those things use a lot of power. So if you have those electrical appliances, definitely go for the 12,000 XP. If the majority of your house uses gas, such as natural gas or propane, then you can probably get away with the 6,000 XP. Now, in terms of the EcoWorthy battery itself, it's proven to be a very reliable 
variable battery. And so many people have done teardowns of this, proving that they're using grade A top quality battery cells that I'm not concerned about the internals at all. Their temperature sensors work. It has all the overcurrent protection that you want. All of the protections that you would typically find in a high-end battery, you're still gonna find in the EcoWorthy battery. You do get a bunch of little accessories, including the handles that you can add on your own, as well as a grounding cable, communication cable, and some heat shrink, which I'm not really sure where you'd put that. You're also gonna get the user manual and the user manual for the app, as well as a safety card. So let me take you step-by-step -step on how to put this system together, so that way if you wanna build one of these systems on your own very affordably, you can do that. And by the way, I'll have links and any additional coupon codes that I have in the description down below. So if you already know that you want to get something like this, you can click those links and get extra discounts. So first things first, I had these batteries on my Uline cart. I love this cart, I use it all the time but EcoWorthy does have their own six battery cart for only $250 and I do recommend getting it. I brought the first battery up on top here so that I could put the handles on. They simply screw onto the side. Make sure that you have the wing sticking out away from the battery. Then I grabbed the second battery and stacked it on top of the first battery. Now, anytime you're working with a server rack battery, you wanna make sure that you have the breaker turned off. In this case of the EcoWorthy battery, it also has these power buttons. So I did a quick test to make sure that everything was functioning fine before I connected these together, turned on the breaker, turned on the power buttons, and both of them booted up just fine. So make sure then to turn off the power buttons and then turn off the breakers, so that way there's zero chance of any energy coming out of the terminals. Each battery includes a battery cable. Because we're doing parallel connection here, that simply means positive to positive, negative to negative. So before we use the battery cables to connect these batteries together, I took my voltmeter and got a voltage reading of each battery to make sure that they were close to the same voltage. Generally speaking, it's okay to do this connection if they're within half of a volt of each other. Now it is a little tricky to get these cables aligned properly, but I'm not too worried about it. Next, it was time to get the battery cables from the two batteries down into the inverter. These are two aught five foot battery cable so they can handle quite a significant load and inside of the 6000 xp there's a very clearly defined positive battery post which is on the left and a negative battery post on the right i just bolted on the battery cable directly to those posts and made sure that i was feeding from the hole underneath the inverter so that way everything was sticking up properly then i came up to the batteries and i chose to put my positive cable on the top battery on the open terminal and then my negative cable to the bottom battery on the open terminal. By doing that, you make sure that you are charging and discharging the batteries equally. I turned on the battery breaker and then the power switch on the right side of the inverter, and I just made sure that everything booted up just fine. After that, it was time to get on the split phase outlets. So I bought this directly off of Amazon with my own money so that I could get split phase power very easily out of this 6000 XP inverter. Very carefully, I cut off the L1430 plug on the end of the cable as close to the plug as I could. Then I came back about four or five inches and cut off the yellow sheathing around the four internal wires. This is where you wanna be extra careful because it's easy to score the sheathing that goes around the copper wires and you don't wanna do that at all. So what I did is I scored the yellow sheathing and then bent it really hard to try to crack it or split it the rest of the way. And then sometimes I had to use a knife to cut the rest of it very gently. I ended up cutting a little bit further back just to make sure I had some more wiggle room to work with inside the 6000 XP. It's always easier to start wiring from the back and then move forward on the inverter which breaker is meant for output power, which is the blue breaker farthest to the left. Directly behind that is the neutral bus bar. So I ran my white cable to there, and then to the right of that is the ground bus bar, and I ran my green cable to there. I made my black cable my line one, and my red cable my line two. I made sure everything was snug inside, so that way there was no chance of those wires coming loose. It'd really be best to use ferrules on these. I chose not to do that. I was just very careful with my wires to make sure I don't have any loose wires sticking out from those terminals. Now I already had the solar wires connected to this inverter because I've used it on other projects, but all you have to do is take your positive red cable that has a female connector on the end of it and take your copper end into the positive port on the charge controller and then do the black cable with a male connector on it, putting the copper end into the negative port on the charge controller. The 6000 XP actually has two inputs for solar, so I just used input number one. Now I'm probably gonna get some extra eight gauge wire and extend the cable that goes to the split phase outlets, 
So that way I can put the outlets up top here or on the front here. But in the meantime, I just used some butyl tape and stuck it straight to the front of the inverter so that it's easy to reach. And I turned on the battery breaker on the inverter, turned on the power switch on the side, and everything was running perfectly. It was after five o'clock when I got everything connected and I was pulling almost three kilowatts of solar input in, even though it was later in the day, which I was very impressed with. But then the biggest test, I got out my voltmeter to make sure that I was getting 240 volt split phase power. I had power on leg one, power on leg two, and split phase power between the two legs. That's perfect. I then even got out my additional outlet checker and plugged those into the two different sides of the outlets to make sure that everything was wired properly and there were zero issues. I do what's called crypto mining here at my house and it's actually how I heated my whole house all winter long off of solar. Basically all it means is that I earn a little bit of Bitcoin every day as a side income. It requires split phase power, which basically just means 120 volt and 240 volt power. So as a test for the batteries in the inverter, I connected my crypto miner, which constantly draws around 3,200 watts when it's running. So I unplugged it from the wall and I got the L1430 cable that I use for powering my house when the grid is down. And that plugged directly into my split phase outlets on the front of the inverter. Then I used some adapters to plug into my power strip that runs my crypto miner. Turned everything on and voila, everything was working perfectly. As of that moment, I was earning money for free using solar power. Now there is a way to run a heavy duty crypto miner like this completely off grid without ever having to pay a power bill. If you wanna know how to do that, I'll put the links in the description down below itemizing exactly what you need to get. So I ran a constant load of about 3,200 watts for about 45 minutes nonstop off of this and had zero issues at all. That's about the equivalent of running an air conditioner nonstop depending on the size of the air conditioner. So this whole setup is fully capable of running that and I was charging off of solar at the same time. So I had solar coming in, battery power going to the inverter and then inverter running the crypto miner. This can very easily run a whole house. And the fact that these are only $850 each and the next best ones are almost $100 more, I can't recommend the EcoWorthy server batteries enough. I've had zero issues with them. Everybody else seems to have had great reviews about them. I definitely love them. Personally, I would have been okay paying an extra 50 bucks in order to have a screen on the front. And to feel even better about using these in cold climate, I would have been fine to spend another 75 or 100 bucks to have a heater built into each of these batteries. But that's not a deal breaker by any means at all. I am very happy with the batteries and how they are, and especially that the price that they're at. It's pretty typical to find lithium iron phosphate batteries for around 20 cents per kilowatt hour. These come in at 16.6 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's about 17% cheaper than what you'd commonly find for LFP cells. Bottom line is if you're looking for a server rack battery, definitely check out the EcoWorthy. They're very good quality and the most affordable on the market right now.